my friends. I'm so excited to see you today. Here's Santa Claus making his appearance. Mmm. I am really excited to be here and just do a get ready with me because anytime I do one of these after the Emily Awards, it always feels like it's been a really long time because that span of videos just, even if it doesn't last much longer than a week, it seems like it took up a lot of time just with all the extra thought, you know, that was not recorded in a video. But anyway, I just wanted to get ready today and sit down and chat. Um, I've got some kind of new sort of fancy things to use in this video, some stuff that came in recently from Sephora so I thought hey I'll use that and um, we'll just have some fun. First things first I'm going to prime. I've got all my skincare on and if my skin looks a little extra glowy the sunscreen I chose today is the um, glow screen from Super Goop and then I found this in my primer drawer. I did a big like decluttering session. I, you didn't miss out on much. You know, I just got rid of some really old things. <laughs> I'll probably do it again fairly soon, but I also, you know, gained some awareness for things I'm almost out of, and I found this Professional Hydrate Primer, and I thought, ooh, that feels like it's about gone. It's a good primer. It's probably my favorite version of Professional. Um, and so I'm just going to slather that on. That would be a good video. You know, things I'm almost out of. It'd be like an empties video, but you'd have enough in there to actually, like, pull off a look, you know? I got some things like that. I was really proud of going through all three of those Glossier serums. And now I've got my nice, fresh new one sitting over there. Okay, there's our primer. Looking smooth, maybe not quite so glowy anymore. And then, guys, I saw a new foundation was out, and I thought, you know, I'd like to try that. It's the Very Valentino. Look how fancy this bottle is. It's the Light Lasting Perfecting Foundation with SPF 26. I've used this a handful of times times already. I'm not over the moon, but I, I don't hate it. It's kind of a middle of the road, I guess, foundation for me. Um, it's very, very thin and liquidy. I don't know if you could see that. When I pumped it out, it was practically running off my finger, okay? So we're just going to dab this around. This is uh, one, almost one full pump. Uh, I still need to get some stocking stuffers. It's Tuesday as I sit here and shoot this. I've talked about this before, guys, but I have a problem with people who were like last week, and by people I mean like, you know, people on today's show get on there and they're like, here's some ideas for last minute shoppers. It's not last minute. Has anybody gone out and bought a gift for their mom as a child on Christmas Eve with their dad? That's last minute shopping. <laughs> so, I mean, I still have plenty of time, but I just like, uh, need to tie up a few loose ends yet. So, here we are bouncing that all in. Like I said, it's really thin. It would have been fine if you wanted to apply this with a brush. It's not one of those super thick foundations where you need the beauty blender to break it down. I mean, it is thin, it is runny. Um, the coverage, as you can see, it's, call it actually full. I don't think I would. I'd call it like a strong medium coverage. And I feel like the finish of it, to me, it seems like it's really trying to be matte, like it would have had an easier time being matte if maybe I didn't have that glow screen underneath or something. Um, but like maybe a natural matte, like not the most matte you've ever seen. But I think it definitely added some matteness to the finish of my skin. And I just kind of, I don't know, I see it and I'm not like ugh, taken aback by its beauty necessarily. I don't know with a price like this and a bottle like that, maybe that's the way you want to feel, but I'm just kind of like, well, okay. Um, Wet and Wild makes me look about the same way. Oh, I'm awful to some of this luxury stuff. I'm always comparing it to my dirt cheap faves, but I tell you, some of those dirt cheap faves are amazing. Okay, I am going to pull out my ABH concealer, my Big Daddy concealer here in four. It's the Magic Touch Concealer. Um, I've talked about this before, how I think this is one of the thicker options out of the full coverage family of concealers that's out there. You know, members of that family would probably be like Elf Camo Concealer, Tarte Shape Tape, the One Size Butter Silk. That would be like on the thinnest end of the spectrum, and this one's a little thicker. But I want to get some use out of it, you know, like it's not my favorite, but... I can kind of like make it work and the shade can turn out to be really brightening on me. So those of you who watch Yellowstone are probably aware of the show called 1883 with, um, it's actually got Tim McGraw and Faith Hill in it. We watched the first episode of that last night, like we recorded it. I think it first aired on Sunday, but it's so good like on the edge of my seat, like, wow. It's like back in olden days and people are trying to, you know, get from point A to point B, but there's all these dangers and it's just like a very scary, ruthless time to live in. They're getting ready to make this big trip from like Texas up to 
well, I, it's gonna be Montana, because this is like the story leading up to the lives of the Dutton family and everything. So we know they're gonna settle in Montana, but right now he's like, I just wanna head north and I'll know where I wanna stop when I see it. But it was good, I really liked the first episode. Oh, and it's got Sam Elliott, and he's just, a badass. If you guys ever took my advice and watched Justified, Sam Elliott was in that toward the latter part as well, and yeah, he was good in that too. Um, okay, so I just bounced this in with the Beauty Blender, which I think helps this uh, particular concealer lighten up a little bit, and then I take this 57 Pro Concealer Brush from Sephora, and I get into those little caverns and really make sure it's blended out well so we don't have any thickness. For powder, has anybody tried this? This is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder Palette. Um, I used to be all about the Hyaluronic Hydra Powder Loose Powder. It's a good loose powder, um, very light, but like does what you want the loose powder to do. And I got this in fair to medium. It's like a little palette of powders, like they're just setting powders. I don't know. Um, I'm almost a little confused by this, but I saw it on Nordstrom and I had to get a couple other things for other people and I might have shopped for myself for a moment. And so I'm going to go with this lightest one and we're just going to do a little setting work here and see how it does. Hmm, how does it feel? How, what's the texture? Super duper smooth, of course. Feels great between the fingers. Well, this shade is very brightening indeed. Notice how it didn't take my under eye down a notch at all. Then maybe I go to the shade below it and try that all over the rest of the skin. But basically Hyaluronic Hydra Powder, the idea with that is that it's a powder that's going to do what powder does, but without like over drying you, without making you look like dry and cakey. I think I may have put on too much on the under eye because I'm looking up close in the combo of too much powder plus the ABH concealer is probably responsible for some of that. That one just doesn't look the best on the under eye. But I'm mad to be continued on this one. This I, I need to do a little more research on it. I need to figure out what the real intentions are here. Then you guys, when I reordered my Glossier serums, I got well, I got a little eye trio here that I showed on Instagram recently, the monochromes trio. They're getting into palettes, y'all. Little palettes. This is the one called Heather. Very mauve really just simplified and pretty. So I used that and liked it. And then I got this Solar Paint Luminous Bronzer Cream. So I'm going to do that, but I also kind of want to do a little contour also. I'm going to use my M Cosmetics So Soft Stick, and this is in the shade Terra. And this is just a great little contour stick. Nothing blends like these. Did anybody grab a couple of these sticks? They have blush sticks, and then they got a couple of the bronzer contour sticks. Oops, I meant to use a different brush. <laughs> this is a little brush from Sigma. It's the Extreme Structure Contour. I just kind of wanted to save this for another step that I'm going to do. See how pretty that is? What a perfect contouring shade. You really don't have to press hard. It's really my favorite thing to contour with. So there's our nice little soft contour step. Very effective, in my opinion. And then we're going to use this Glossier Solar Paint Luminous Bronzer Cream. Um, I got it in the shade Ray. It's got a little doe foot applicator here, and I've used this hardly at all. So I'm kind of like really still experimenting. Putting it in bronzer places. <laughs> uh, just see. I know it has quite a bit of glow and shimmer. I don't know how long it's been out. Hair, if you could cooperate. I'm doing it a little higher than my contour. And it's blending quite easily. It didn't like set immediately on my skin. It's good. I probably could have used like a little bit more here and there, but I just wanted to keep it light because I'm just not super familiar with that product yet. Next, guys, we're going to use my Natasha Denona Glam face palette, which I chose in the shade Dark. Um, I was really intrigued by these, this, you know, multi-purpose palette. You know, I love something like that. I'm a sucker for those. Um, but they had a light and a dark, and I just thought the dark seemed more appealing to me. And when I saw them show pictures of the models, and they kind of showed all skin tones using either one, I thought, well, sure, I'm going to go with this one. It can give me a richer eye look, a little more range there. Um, I was intrigued by the blush color. So it says cream blush and star glow up under this little 
window here, which I really like that brands are taking care to cover up creams with the window. Um, this cream does not feel like goopy creamy at all. Um, it barely feels like a color pop creaminess. It's a real cross to me between like powder and cream and I wanted to use this brush for it. Again, if you want this brush in, in a version you can buy, just get the um, number 56 brush from Sephora. But a pretty rosy color. I really like it. There's some shimmer in it, but it doesn't show up in a real out there way. Did anybody else try this palette or the light version or what did you think of it? My birthday's coming up on the 27th. I'm excited. I have no big plans, but maybe I'll come up with some little plans. Look at that. I, I, I really like that, but it's not maybe quite as dark as you would have expected. I mean, I am building up slowly. It could go deeper yet. You could be a little more heavy handed with it, but I just think that's very flattering. And then the texture of the highlight, to me that really seems like powder. I think it is, they're just letting it sit under that window, partially probably to protect it from any dark fallout from the eyeshadows. So get out your Real Techniques setting brush. This is called Star Glow. So get a little bit of that on there. It looks just like a glaze, you know? It's, it's like the shimmer sort of without a lot of powdery filler is what it makes me think of when it hits the skin. I like it. Okay, so I've kind of got that lightly all over. You also get a nice big mirror in here. You also get um, magnetic closure with the palette. So it's kind of satisfying in a lot of ways. We're gonna come back to it for the eyeshadow. And we're gonna use a little bit of setting spray. This is just my Wet n Wild Natural Finish. I know I said I was keeping it fancy in this video, but apparently not. <laughs> that highlight is very glowy. <laughs> like now that I've added just a little moisture to the skin, it looks even more glowy. I should have gone a little more sparingly because I just feel, I'm feeling a little too glazed donut right now. When was that shift made in calling yourself a disco ball to a glazed donut on this channel? Just almost a little too much. Going back to this, <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, add a little more on top of here. You will still see the highlight, trust me. Okay, I'm good with that. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> For eyebrows today, I'm gonna use my Benefit Brow Micro Filling Pen, my little angle tri-tip thingy here, inky brow pen. I think just works really well for me and it fills in the brows really quick. And then I'm just gonna use my Brow Fast Sculpt to kind of lift them up a little bit and set them in place. You know how we do with this, with the brush. I'm using the end that doesn't carry as much product so I can just get them fluffed. Ugh. As I was sitting here doing brows, I just going through my mental to-do list right now. Like I've got so much wrapping left. I'm one who doesn't like to wrap too soon because I really wanna like take inventory of everything I have and I wanna make sure I have everything I need, like did everything come in, does this kid have as much as this kid, and all that stuff, and it's like I, I have to kind of wait till the tail end to do my wrapping. Tail end might come, I don't know, tomorrow. I still have just a couple things that I'm like waiting on. Feeling wonderful about those brows, feeling amazing about all this. <laughs> That'd be the postpartum hair that's still like two years later. Now, instead of being this long, it's like that long. Hey, all are welcome here. All hairs. Get your Milani eyeshadow primer on. I'm gonna try to redo my nails and I'm not gonna mess around with this regular polish. I'm gonna get back to my Le Mini Macaroon gel kit. That stuff stays. Back to this. And now we have our lovely eyeshadows here. And do you see how they've labeled them? Crease, inner corner, smoke, transition, outer corner. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the transition shade, which is a nice like terracotta that's not too orangey. And I'm just gonna bring that through my crease. So this is our lightest matte shade in the whole bunch. I think I'm gonna try to like, let it really smoke up there, take up some space, if you know what I mean. And I wanna know in the comments section, what is your favorite like childhood Christmas special? Um, one that is no longer like aired on TV all the time is Muppet Family Christmas. Like you gotta, you gotta find it on YouTube. I'll link to it below. We like watch it on YouTube and stream it on, 
get it on our TV like through Apple TV, you know. But that just is the all-time great for me. But in terms of the stuff that they still show on, on like the major networks, uh, I love the Grinch cartoon. And it's very comforting, is it not, to see like Frosty and Rudolph come on again. I like how much my kids enjoy those. But I love the Grinch, you know, the, the little half-hour cartoon Grinch. Oh, did I tell you guys mom and I made our Chex Mix? We got that all made um, this past Friday and it turned out so well. I feel like every time we do it, we sort of have, we, we've gone through different variations. We've done like pumpkin pie Chex Mix or pumpkin spice. Last time we did like a hot cocoa Chex Mix where we literally sprinkled hot cocoa mix over some of the finished trays of stuff. Um, this year we kind of stuck to the traditional version but our accent cereal because there always needs to be something, at least when you're making this at Christmas time in my opinion, that like pops and kind of stands out in your Chex Mix and I found this um, Captain Crunch cereal that's all crunch berries. I think they call it Oops All Crunch Berries and it's so cute and it kind of made me think of Christmas lights and just fun cheery. The Elf on the Shelf cereal is another good one. It's got to be a substantial enough cereal to go in there and mix with everything kind of hold its own and the Elf on the Shelf is like little green and red stars so that's a good one but the crunch berries turned out great this year they look so cute in with everything okay so all i've been working with this whole time has been that one shade i've like buffed it and blended it to nothingness now i'm going to take a little bit of the color called crease over here so another matte a real basic brown with this one like it's not too warm not too cool just brown i got no problem with brown and can I say I'm gifting those cozy wraps to like three people on my list this year? The Walmart cozy wrap? Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be one of those things where they're going to be wearing it and somebody's going to ask them about it and be like, yeah, this is from Walmart. It's just like Barefoot Dreams. I swear I use mine like every single day. So I'm really getting that crease shade there in the guess what crease. And then I'm going to take smoke and this is going to be outer corner business. I'm going to grab my flat brush focus. That one does want to have a little fallout, which is something to be aware of. It is your darkest shade. Tap off excess with that. So a really cool dark brown. It almost looks like in comparison to what's actually coming off pretty warm in my crease right now, that looks so cool it almost looks black, you know, this brown right here. Now I think I'm going to mix a little of smoke and crease with my small pointed brush and I'm going to really hit that outer outer corner crease area and see so give myself that little like deepened up lift there. Dab into the two and then we're working like little circular motions up and out from the eye, from the crease of the eye. Oh, I love that. That just looks so pretty. Then if you want, you know, you can take a bare brush, hit that edge. I'm going to take a little more smoke now, and we're going to go to the lower lash line with that. Oops, I forgot to tap off the excess. Oh, well, we're trying to stay neat here. Mmm, toasty, lovely. I think this might be one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes that she's ever done. I really like the blush, the highlight in moderation. These eyeshadows are so working for me. And we haven't even brought in the glitz yet. This is strictly all the mattes so far. Okay, so then we've got two shimmers here, inner corner and outer corner. When I've used this before, I've just kind of put like this on the center part of the lid and then this further in. So just so I can show you both, I'm going to do it that way again. So I'm going to use the one called outer corner, flat brush. And it's kind of a kind of a coppery shade, but not copper in a super bright way. It generates a little sheen, but not off the charts. Okay. And then we're going to go to inner corner right here. And this is the really glitzy color. And I might even use my finger with this. Sometimes the finger just makes me, does nothing else other than make me more confident that it's clinging to the skin. Look, that's glitzy. Hmm. So, so pretty. Like, if you just like a pretty toasty brown eye with some warmth that is not on a real orange level, 
but more just just toasty you know what I'm saying I'm gonna take a bit more of transition with my little wispy white e36 brush because I want that to just shine outside the edge here I don't want to lose that in my blending Next, I'm going to go across my top lash line, but with a little pencil here. This is my Maybelline Tattoo Studio. Did any of you guys do any little, like, advent calendars for your kids to open every day? We got what I think has been the cutest one I've ever seen the kids do. And it's a little Thomas the Train miniature set. So every day you get another link of the train and they're so cute. Like I'm a Thomas the Train novice, like somebody tell me where to begin for Bubba if I wanna get some stuff like that. Um, but this, like it has some of the regular, it looks like train characters. And then some of them that you open up look like they have presents in them. And some of them look like snowflakes and they're really cute and they can link them all up and you know, make a whole train out of it so by now as you would imagine we've got quite a few links another good one for kids that we've done in the past um, that I think is available year after year like on Amazon is the Fisher Price little people advent calendar and it ends up giving you like all the stuff to make kind of a winter scene Next up, I'm going to do a little mascara. I'm going to use this NARS Climax, which came in PR, and that, I was recently reminded of the fact that that is a really good mascara for me. It reminds me a lot of Superhero, actually, in terms of how fast it builds up. Just really good stuff, so I thought I would use that today. And it's interesting, all the red accents. There's going to be a red accent on the lip product as well, but like the Valentino Foundation and this mascara. This is really a brush that I love, just that really full brush, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of big, but it's not scaring me, and the tapered tip is very helpful. See how pretty, like, just real immediate length and thickness. And I'm doing a little lash discovery down here on the lower lashes. I'm gonna pop on some lashes as well, just because I'm feeling like this is kind of a special occasion -y look. I don't know why. Not that you have to wear lashes for every special occasion, but it's just giving me the feel. So there's my lashes on. It's just one of the styles from the So Wispy collection. Um, one of my original ones, so I'm not sure which one it was actually, but I've got those on. And then the other red thing, this is from Makeup Forever, and it's the, called the Rouge Artist Shine On. So basically like a little shiny lipstick. And I kind of like the way it's cut. It's the width over all of a standard lipstick, but it comes back to more of a small point. This is the one called Fire Rosewood. To me, these feel a lot like the L'Oreal Color Riche shines. Maybe a little less shiny than that ultimately on the lips, but they're pretty and they feel nice. And with a shade like this, like if I was wearing it out and about, I probably would give it a quick blot. Actually, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole shine thing, but it would make me feel a little more comfortable. But I do think that's a pretty color. I'm kind of of the mindset where, you know, it, it's not hard to find really good, even shiny finish red in the drugstore if that's what you wanted. Um, for me, I would probably get this almost this exact same shade in the Rimmel Provence apocalypse in the shade called Heartbreaker or something similar in that Maybelline Superstay. That's how I would prefer to wear the red, but this is a nice formula. It's, it's fancy looking. Um, I dig it. It's nice with my little shirt that I have on here, but overall this was fun to just sit down and do a little get ready with me and try out some new things. Um, I'm not over the moon about the foundation. This new Valentino stuff, I mean, I just, I feel like it's the kind of look I can get multiple different ways. Really what I enjoyed most was the Glam Face Palette. And again, I'm wearing this in the dark option. There is a lighter option as well that's gonna give you a whole lighter spread of eyeshadows. But I just really like the look that that turns out and I like the blush and highlight too. So for me, in this video, that was kind of the star. So thank you so much for your time today, everyone. I hope you're having a great day and I will talk to you guys again very soon. I love you, bye.